Hey boardies, welcome to Mass Games. Today I'm bringing you Aeons and Outcasts. And as you can see, you are seeing double. I've accidentally ordered two copies. So um, we've already played Aeons and Legacy, which is fantastic. It's what I believe to be pretty much the 15th best game of all time. And you can combine contents from Aeons and about 80% of it with Aeons and Outcasts. So Aeons and Outcasts, as you can imagine, there is some... Uh, outcastiness going on with this one as well and uh, in this particular game there are stories of new grave hold and that is basically far to the south an old mage has found a new home let me move this side by side there we go and let's get legacy kind of out of shot for the time being okay so again if you haven't seen unboxing it basically lets you know kind of content that is going to be coming your way as well as obviously uh, future things so it allows you to see what's basically inside the box. Um, there's lots of views for uh, unboxings, so that's why I do it. Otherwise, I wouldn't. And people ask about it. They want to know what's inside of it. They don't necessarily want to know how to set up, plan, and review. But if you do want to know that, please do obviously stick around and you'll check out that video. So please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification to check out what it is going to be in here. As well as, of course, um, hit that thumbs up as well to be enjoying the content. And finally, of course, uh, check out those comments, reply, and I do reply very quickly. And finally, there's a description on anything else that's less yet to tell you. It's got a different kind of boards down here as well. So uh, in this particular one, we have Brahma. This is a kind of like our mother hen. And uh, basically, yeah, a new way of life without her, you know, without her restrictive rules. But when a new spectre from her past reappears, she'll have to conjure and Venture into the void itself to find her salvation. Can the light of redemption be found in even the most twisted souls? So this one again is a cooperative deck building game. Again, you don't shuffle your cards. And uh, again, it's a variable player power order as well. So basically simulates the chaos of battle and deck management, making all decisions meaningful. Every game you'll face a different nemesis, each of the unique set of abilities requiring a different strategy to be defeated. So there's another narrative-based expedition, builds an existing Aeons and lore. It also includes new mages, nemesis, as well as gems, relics, and spells, compatible again with everything else in Aeons End. Okay, this is a standalone expansion as well. It can be mixed and matched with the other standalone games. And now let's have a quick look inside here. Let's punch some bits out and see what earth is going on. So yeah, some different characters. We've got some uh, interesting looking guy over here. And again, this is by Indie Boards and Cards. And let me move this out of the way for the time being. So here we go. This looks like the big, uh, the big beast, and uh, having played Aeon's End Legacy, which is basically Aeon's End, but the fantastic Legacy storyline to it. You've got solo play as well. You can be aware of different cars, different tiers you can use. We have uh, different guidelines for making a supply. I think there's eight nemesis in these ones as well. Breach spike. Um, now something I will say quickly is this has been on the shelf. And of course, you could store it on your shelf, shelf obviously horizontally, vertically. I just don't know which side I want to have. Do I want to have, you know, this uh, this worm thing with this character over here? This guy looks a bit too a bit too scary for my liking. And this guy obviously I'd have this way up, which again looks quite scary to me. And finally, I have this guy who uh, looks a bit uh, nonplussed, to be honest. So I'm not sure of which of those ones I'd like to have. Um, which way up I want to have it uh, on the shelf. So uh, obviously different game ends, different ways you can win and lose. And uh, let's go into here, end of expedition rulebook. So it looks like there's something else you could be doing. Probably, yeah, once you've finished it. So Outcast here, got the narrative booklet. So basically taking you through each of the different things, how you're going to fight off. So a little kind of a mini campaign -y kind of thing to do. And uh, before you look at anything else, obviously make sure you correctly set up your deck. Certain amount of magic, certain amount of relics, etc. Like gems and spells. So you have a thing here, uh, which is all around, I think, different ways you can do something. So you've got a uh, grave hole could suffer damage and things. Oh my goodness, so that's a pretty cool looking crazed bunny with multiple ears. Uh, you've got absolutely loads of uh, damage tokens, which for some reason are upside down. And more power tokens and this uh, Tarquin's barrier. It looks like you have to... Yeah, punch them out from the front to the back. Just whilst I'm doing that, we have, you can gain extra charge. You may cast one of your prep spells. You have these more tokens, MAWs. You've got focus your closed breach with the lowest cost, uh, with the Zahana glyphs. 
You've got some charge tokens. You may cast one of your prep spells. Gain a card that costs three or less from any pile. I recall those are called ether from memory. So different things you can work on there. Bunch of cards, loads of cards. I do like these about deck building games. And thinking about what kind of game would I like to have on a desert island? Well, the amount of different ways you can play chess is one of them. But another one would definitely be a deck builder. The amount of variety of combinations that you can provide, the way you can build your deck, the way you obviously, you know, you can fight back from an enemy, because of course it's a cooperative game. Uh, but of course, even if you're on that island solo, um, you could of course play this game solo as well. So you've got different, uh, yeah, different dials here again, which looks like I said, really interesting looking ba baddie and beastie. It looks like something out of, uh, hmm, I'm not sure which film it is to be honest, but uh, it wasn't one of the alien ones. But yeah, very nasty looking evil critter. Might not be evil, you never know. And then this looks like it could be us. It could be a baddie again. Um, can't quite tell from that. So it had us again, nice boards, uh, complexity rating, and then you've got they're all the same size. We've got Tarquin gaining a charge. He looks pretty cool, like Doctor Doctor Strange. Uh, it's very nice. You're not exhausted. You can gain three life. Otherwise, Gravehold gains three life. Um, you start with three crystals and two sparks. You get an esoteric amplifier as well in your starting hand. Um, you've got your different uh, breaches at different positions. Again, coming back to St. Hanna, you get four crystals, four crystals and a glyph carver. And then your starting deck is three crystals, a glyph carver and a spark. So I think those are all punched out. I always make sure to make sure I haven't missed them off. We've got Kel. So you start with two crystals. You get an entwined amethyst and a true light of energy. You have a spark. You have two crystals into an amethyst, a true light of energy and a spark as well. Activate during your main phase, return up to two gems or relics. You play this turn to your hand. Any ally draws a card and may prep a spell in hand and open or close breach. Now I've got more charge tokens obviously down the bottom. And uh, yeah, looks of interest. We've got a layer. Oh, wow, so many different characters. And then uh, experiment. So we've got this uh, beastie down here with any more tokens, two spaces forward. Here we go, plenty of things to work through here, different envelopes. So we've got an envelope here, got some baggies. Envelope end, okay. Do not open until instructed. You've got envelope 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B. And it looks like that's on the back of uh, 3B. And then again, that looks like it could be the end one. But then we've got uh, four, maybe, I don't know, maybe that was different. So all those in there too. Um, Got the baggies for all this stuff down here. We've got our breaches that we're going to handle. We've got all of these different cards. So what do we have in here? Okay, so we've got different things to work through. Uh, more different things. Deck B. Probably just the starting cards. D. On to actually what we're going to face. 2A, 2B. Got 3A, of course 3B. So isn't that order? 4. And there's ginormous end deck as well. So lots of contents. Uh, birthday is coming up, and it looks like I could well be enjoying this on the birthday. And, you know, might not be a win. Could be. I lost on my birthday last year, so we'll have to see. Um, but, yeah, everything is there. Got a nice bit of foam to keep an eye on where things go. And let's just... Uh... Oh, it's square. Okay, interesting. Like I said, that has been just an overview for Aeon's End Outcasts. Didn't want to go into too much detail in case I pick up the wrong thing just on this unboxing to keep it spoiler free. But there we go, some new rules. So we do have a cursed deck. We've got a simultaneous effects, wandering, and some additional things from chapter one. Well, very excited. Very, very excited to try out Aeon's End Outcasts. It could well be in my top 50 games of all time, as is, of course, Aeon's End Legacy. Look forward to telling you more about it. All the best. Bye for now.